Right, hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new lesson. Today I'm joined by Adrian, also known as father to me, and today we're going to be talking about top three things you need to be doing with your driver to make sure that you're hitting it better, getting rid of some of that slice and not getting some of those horrible, nasty, sky um, shots with the driver. So let's get stuck into this lesson and find out what they are. So guys, before we do get stuck in though, do remember to hit the subscribe button down below, turn on the bell notification so you don't miss any future lessons to help you improve your golf. So, the big dog, the driver, I would imagine like myself, you've seen some, uh, some questionable shots with it over the time of your uh, teaching career. Most definitely. And uh, we've picked three areas, or you've picked three areas that you see quite a lot of issues with and three simple drills that you can give everybody to help them start hitting the driver B. So what would area number one be that you see the problem with with the driver? Generally, obviously, everybody, we all want to hit it further, but a big tendency is, of course, everybody wants to throw the kitchen sink at it. So they're really overusing their body too much is in the downswing. Is that because of the, I want to hit it further, I'm going to give it my brute force sort of thing? Yeah, they just, you know, they want to smash the living daylights out of it, you know. Okay. But it's, it's a bit more sophisticated than that. You know, Jack Nicholas said, if you wanted to hit it further, I just try and hit it better. So obviously you've got to find yeah. the sweet spot. Yep. That's really key. You know, speed, of course, is necessary. Comes quicker out of the uh, middle of the club as opposed to the toe or the heel, doesn't it? Exactly. The quality of the strike is really important. Of course, all the usual things moving the club on the right path with the face in the right direction okay. and so on. So tip number one, what, what is it then that causes that, that issue then? Well, the looking at? big tendency, as I said, is that you, people want to recruit help too much from the body. Of okay. course, the body plays a big part, but the big key is to get the club head moving at speed. Okay. You know, if you turn the club upside down and simply do this, yeah. you can hear that whip. That's yeah. really what you want through okay, that golf to ball get that speed with that down speed. at the bottom so why don't people do it and how can people do it well one of the biggest issues we see is that from the top of the backswing this is kind of as Hogan said the crossroads in the swing from here they'll start to pull hard with the left shoulder yeah. spin this heel will come up now the club's coming out and over yeah. it's going to chop across it a steep angle of attack a glancing blow yeah. no matter how quick they're swinging it that's just going to glance it's it and all that power is it? it's not efficient. But. So so it all comes from that lead shoulder or the being, being too active in the shoulders basically. Yeah, a simple thing I say to many students over the years, you know, the golf swing's only six inches long and that sounds stupid. But right. when you think about the journey of the left shoulder yeah. during the golf swing and the journey of the club head, yeah. you know, this club head's traveling 20 feet or so there yeah, and back to impact. Yeah. But if you look where my left shoulder travels, it's so about six or eight inches here. Yeah. And then when I return it back to impact. So this has only got so far to go. Yeah. While this club head has got to make this big journey. So obviously the club head's traveling quicker than the left shoulder. If the left shoulder runs off, this ain't going to catch up. So the drill would be aimed at trying to slow this down, would it? Certainly. What we want to try and do is pacify the left shoulder from the top. Get the feeling of throwing the club head. The club head's actually got to release a little earlier with the driver than it has with an iron. Okay. An iron, you're dragging it and trying to compress it. Yeah. With the wood, we've got to get it releasing a little earlier so the bottom of the arc is wider and flatter so we can sweep it off. So at this camera here, if you could just, just talk us through that drill then, what, what is the step by step of it? What do we need to do? What so, feeling everyone wants let's to assume you've addressed it correctly and so on and you've swung to the top of your backswing. Yeah. From the top of the swing here, a little bit of a gentle nudge with the hips, yeah. but then you're going to be more aware of feeling the club head, feeling the weight of the club head, keeping your That's grip it. pressure you're light. Doing that there, it looks like the shoulder's stopped almost. It almost is kind of stopping, as I say, it's slowing down, yeah. certainly. Yeah. If we get into the science of the golf yeah. swing, obviously, let's not. yeah, all these components, but actually, believe it or not, while the club head's doing, let's say, 120, 30 miles an hour, the top player, the hands here are only doing about 15 and the body about five, because yeah. these haven't got as far to travel. No. So the club head's Directly traveling. The body and let the club head actually catch up to the body. Yeah, real simple oh. analogy. Think of a pole vaulter. You know, the guy's running at the board, the board, the stick stops, the pole stops, and that catapults the... Right. Okay, so well, the golf swing's like an upside down board. version of that. As my left shoulder slows down, yeah. the club head releases and snaps okay. so that simple feeling keep the left shoulder quiet yeah throw the club head let's, uh, let's see you peg one up and uh let's give it a go one off from there if we can get another way for you so we're trying 
to really slow down this lead shoulder, like I say, from a lot of the lessons at um, Dan very aggressive, so the, the slow feeling, let's, let's see this in action now. Yeah, so in slow motion, as I say, keep it quieter, yeah. can't stop it, obviously, yeah. and then let allow the club head to unload all that power. Okay. Allow that club head to get rid of those angles into that golf ball, making them useful. Okay, let's, let's give it a go. Of the fairway, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we've got the quiet shoulder tip number two. What do we see happen with a lot of people? We've had that, what would be, let's say, hitting it from the wrong direction, the glancing blow, I think you referred to it. As exactly, well. yeah, a lot of people are coming over. It's a nice kind of easy concept to think, well, if I swing through straight, the ball's going to go straight. Yeah. But given that we stood, you know, 40 odd inches here inside the golf ball, the club's moving around on an angle. Yeah. You've got to understand the journey or the path the club head has got to make okay. to hit that ball straight. So it's only actually travelling briefly straight but through impact, you know, very, one, very one two thousandths of a second, you know. So we don't want to be feeling that we're going straight back and straight through. What do we want to feel then? Give us, give us a drill, give us a visual that we want to do. Well, the real key thing is that what people don't realise with top players is that they're actually very aware of what part of the golf ball they're hitting. Okay. And if they're going to draw it and fade it, just like a footballer might kick a ball. The old back of analogy. Yeah, exactly. So subliminally, a good player is thinking of that. What a real simple tip for your viewers is to hit the ball at four o'clock. If you're a slicer, you want to hit what we call more the inside of the ball. Okay. So let me show you. So if I just use this hula hoop here. These little articles. Yeah, and let's say that represents a club face, that being about 12 o'clock there, yeah. This say six o'clock. And here, I'm going to put this in to about four o'clock, okay. okay? So a lot of the viewers are probably on this side of the camera here, when we've got 12, 6 and now 4 over here, we're saying they're at 1, 2 o'clock? Yeah, well what they're trying to do here, or a lot of people's perception is if they swing straight, so they're coming in at 3 o'clock if this was 12 here, yeah. they're thinking, well if I swing down straight, that ball's going to go nice and straight. Okay. But in reality, as I said, because this swing is occurring on this angled arc, yeah. You'll notice now the journey of the club head is coming from the inside and only squares up here. Right. So in your perception, yeah. as I say, you want to be feeling, if you're seeing the club clock face this way, yeah. that you're going to attack it at four o'clock. If you're hitting this, what we call inside quadrant of the ball, yeah. just like you mentioned, David Beckham or what have yeah. you, you know, for us older viewers, <laughs> um, you're coming in this way, yeah. four o'clock, instead of hitting the ball, outside maybe at two. The okay. slicers are attacking it too much this way. Okay, so if I can move this out, and I'm just gonna angle this here a little bit for you. Yeah. Just tilt it at three o'clock back towards four. Would you be able to hit one in that position four? Yeah, yeah, definitely so here, yeah. The feeling would be that you're coming on the inside of three o'clock, like you say, down that four o'clock. Exactly, hour. yeah. Works. And you know, the, you might wanna use your head cover or what have you, or a sponge I'll often use, yeah. just to encourage golfers to get that club head coming this way okay. and not coming out over the top there. Right, perfect. Let's, see that Let's give it a go. So we've got a slow shoulder and now we're going to be coming at four o'clock. Exactly. Let's, Let's see that ripped away for us Let's here. Let's give it a go. <clears throat> Two draws in a row down the middle of the fairway. You, I must have got lucky. You're on form today. Exactly. Um, okay so the third and final tip that we would see for um, hitting better drives, what would it be? Well, actually, just while you mention it, it's exactly there. Can you see how the tee is still in the floor? Ah, yeah, yeah. I often tell my students, listen, if you had one tee peg left to play a round of golf with, one wooden tee peg. There'd be a lot of drivers off the deck. <laughs> exactly, yeah. The goal would be to preserve that tee peg. See if you can make that wooden tee last for a whole round. Yeah. Now, I know, unfortunately, many of you will be smashing the thing into the floor yeah. and going through them like nobody's business. Yeah. But if you can, what we need to know with a driver is we've obviously got to sweep it and pick it off the tee. Okay. We know irons are hit down on and squeezed, but with the driver... And, and for the viewers at home, if you can imagine now going and getting your driver out of the golf bag, I think one prime thing that we will probably see would be if I could just steal this from you at the moment. The, um, the top of the driver 
you know, a lot of my lessons when they come to <coughs> when uh, we start looking at driver, there's a lot of, uh, you know, skin of the ball on top, lots of scuffs and uh, big scratches on yeah. the for the driver. Yeah. That's probably because of the, the steep nature. It is typically, you know, when I look at the driver and say, oh, I can see a lot of roof marks. Oh, well, I'll lend that to my friend. I didn't do those, yeah. you know, or I, I did those two years oh, ago yes, yes. Uh, and so on. But obviously, joking apart, they're a telltale sign okay. that if you see those roof marks and scuffs on the top of the driver, you that's an indication that the angle of attack you've been hitting down on it too so, much. So what's the drill then? If you were going to line a few pegs up there, yeah. are, we, are we aiming to leave them in or do we want to see yeah. that we're breaking it? I mean, what? And just on that fact, would T height matter as well? If you are someone who is a little bit steep, yes, you want to try and sort it out, but it would probably be a little bit of a, a, a silly idea for you to peg it up high because you're going to come under it, you know, solve the solve the problem on the range, but maybe tee it down a little bit on the golf course so you still get the middle of the face. You, you can do that. Obviously, it's dependent on the skill level of yeah. the player. Of, co of, of course it is. Yeah. And all the research with launch monitors and so on tell us that we're going to launch it high with less spin yeah. and so on. But there's a skill yeah. in learning to pick that ball off the tee. And for the viewers at home, one thing they can do is go in the garden and listen Literally, you know, you don't need golf balls to practice this skill. Yeah. So if I stand here and I've just got some tee pegs and I just practice clipping them, you know, you can see here, just practice nipping the top of the tee. Yeah. If I start to pummel down on it, you yeah. know, and I'm doing that in the garden, that. it's highly likely it might well happen yeah. when I'm hitting the golf course. And as I say, that is actually a skill. Yeah. Actually standing there and learning just to regulate the angle of approach, yeah. and you know, you might hear the analogy of the aeroplane landing. I call yeah. it like a false landing. The plane's coming in and just brushing, and just it, back brushing it, but it's not doing a crash yeah. landing where you're sticking the nose in the runway. Okay. So you're trying to pick them clean off. Okay, perfect. So third and final tip there, we want to what take four or five pegs and just see that we're just grazing the top of each peg each time and see that we're uh, we're going to be leaving the men and we're not breaking every single peg. Exactly, it might seem like an overly simplistic drill that, mm. but if you could stand there, as I say, in the garden or on the tee and just, yeah, just nipping them without smashing the things down the garden. Ball's going to be in the middle of the face, isn't it? You're going to start finding the yeah. centre of the face. You're yeah. going to spin it correctly. You're going to be using the sweet spot. It's win-win. When I'm uh, a... <clears throat> When I'm at the range teaching, I, I like to, you know, even with the drive, you hear the thud into the mat, and obviously the rubber tees make that weird little sort of poppy sound. And like, exactly, hear the poppy sound. Come, on, let's pick it off, pick it off, and just and just leave that residue. Even with the the, um, the spray, the spray paint, the face, yeah. I think it's a great yeah. one where you just see a little bit. You don't want to see that you've got that big big mark of the uh, where the tee was, where it's taking the spray off. We want to see that you've still got quite a lot of the spray on the face as you go through. It. Yeah, and masking tape. You know, those are inexpensive ways of seeing where your impact location yeah. is and they can give you a lot of feedback yeah. obviously excellent right then so we're going to end this nice little uh, three tip video with you just hitting this one here and goal is obviously to leave the tee peg in the ground i would imagine i want to be able to come in and pick that out after you've hit this drive after that little segue you've given us there so let's see this shot let's see that i can pick the uh, the tee peg out after you've clipped it away exactly that's the goal see what i can do no pressure smoked and there we have one tee picked out of the ground there not broken at all so three fantastic tips there with the drivers guys if you're struggling with a throwing the shoulders a little bit too much if you want to get your path a little bit better or you're getting that strike out of the roof of the driver run back through those tips re-watch them get practicing like adrian said it might even be that you're just practicing your guard and getting a little bit of a feeling of where the club's going out it doesn't mean you have to go and smash 100 balls down at the range Guys, thanks for watching this lesson this week. If you've enjoyed it, do remember to hit the like button down below. Also, go and follow Adrian on his social media platforms. They're all in the link in the description down below. Remember also, do hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification so you don't miss any future lessons to improve your golf. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next lesson.